Welcome to the Learning Project Network, where we learn through stories to make a change. The Learning Project Network, an organization dedicated to social justice issues. We are dedicated to learning about issues that impact children, families, and communities to help start conversations that lead to solutions. We believe that through storytelling and peer support, individuals can better understand how experiences lead to outcomes. Hello, everybody. This is Stephanie Courtney with The Learning Project. We are back again with another podcast, y'all. I'm so excited. You know me. I'm always out on social media trying to find some of the most amazing people that touch our minds, heart, body, souls every day. And let me tell you, I came across a person on LinkedIn, Miss Roberta Bell. You are so awesome. I was looking at your profile and looking over the things that you do. And I really feel like my audience would love to hear more about what you offer, how you're helping your community. But we are here to answer the ultimate question. What does womanhood mean to you? So let's start off with introducing yourself. Who are you and what do you do? Okay. Um, my name is Roberta Bell. Uh, I am a therapist. Uh, I'm a, a parent and children advocate, well, family okay. advocate. Uh, I also work with people who have been uh, uh, the uh, adoption. Uh, and that's kind of not just child, but that's a lifelong situation mm. or transition for the, for the person that has been adopted. Uh, so I work with that individual as well. Uh, I work with uh, uh, several different churches, uh, so uh, just a lot of holistic approaches. Uh, and for mental health, uh, I think mental health is number one. Yeah. Uh, and to be centered, uh, it basically we all need that. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some things that I've that I've done and been doing and still doing. Wow! Oh my word! I I love that you work with families that go through that process of adoption. And I like how you talk about it being a long life transition. Um, what do you mean by that when you say that? Well, because there may be, uh, we all go do, through different transitions during different times of our lives. So if you've been adopted and same the same uh, benefit for the adoptive parents, so the adoptive family, uh, you go through, uh, you go through childhood, then you go through adolescence, and then you mm. go through your uh, early teens, and then you go through your late teens. So there's a lot of transitions that go on there. And throughout yeah. that time, we have some genetic dispositions, right, that may peak out, that may came from your uh, original parents or uh, yeah. uh, original donors. And so everybody needs some help with with guidance through that time. So that's why it's not limited to this early childhood. So mm. that's just a component that uh, I thought was really beneficial uh, for the program that I work with. Oh, I love that so much. Y'all, we're about to get into it. So I don't know who needs to hear this. If you're like, you know what? I have a friend that needs to hear this podcast. I want you to stop doing what you're doing right now. Stop being greedy and share the podcast, you guys. So Ms. Roberta, tell me, what does womanhood mean to you? Wow. Well, <clears throat> that's a big word. Uh, womanhood uh, by itself, you know, uh, as I reflect upon it, I think, well, he gave us authority to even be the creators. Mm. So not only are we uh, women, but he gave us the authority, you know, men cannot have children. Right. And I'm not right. just talking about, I'm talking about symbolic, uh, a symbolic meaning of giving birth. So yeah. not just giving birth to a baby. I mean, we are entitled with giving birth to everything yeah uh, i'm saying we could give birth to relationships we can give birth to pro uh, projects uh we can give life to about everything that he gives us in our way and we yes. don't realize that but we're powerful yeah uh, womenhood is is big you know we're over the nutrition we're over the nurturance of individuals that come into our lives mm -hmm. uh we just have such a big umbrella if you want to talk about uh going and operating under something we're operating under a large uh, under um umbrella 
uh-huh. of things when we talk about uh, womanhood. Uh, yeah. So it just could be, it could go on and on, but the beginning is to know uh, what our, our, not only our work, but what all our cap- capabilities are. Uh, oh. We're pretty uh, powerful uh, and, and womanhood is very powerful. As again, I said, our, our, uh, our men, you know, no disrespect to them, but they can't give birth. <laughs> so that lets you know that he made us pretty powerful and refined, yes. meaning that we are uh, tuned to just about everything. Anything that we put our hands to, we make it multiply. Yeah. Any good man will tell you, hey, if you get it, if you know, or or even to tell you if they're blessed with a good woman, they'll tell you, you know what? I might have been toiling with that thing, but once I gave it to her or had her help me with it and put her mm-hmm. hands on it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't know how she did it. Oh, but that's because that's the power of womanhood. And uh, so it's just important that we realize that, that, and like I said, and it's not even about even giving birth to a baby, but symbolic part is knowing that you can give birth to whatever you put your mind to. Mm. Can you say that one more time? That was so deep. Uh, (laughs) We talk about infertility a lot on here. Mm -hmm. And this has been a, this has been a conversation, which is what defines your womanhood. And a lot of times, it's actually giving physical birth, but you're talking about spiritual birth, uh, manifesting things that are coming through dreams, uh, problem solving, nurturing. Can you say that one more time? That was so beautiful. Okay. Uh, what I said is that it's not just giving, it's not giving birth. Hmm. I, I refer to that because that is one of the greatest gifts that we have, but I say that the other part of it is it's symbolic because we can give birth to whatever we put our hands on, whatever we put our minds and our hearts into. That is the, the growth and that is the power of womanhood. That is our power. Uh, and that is how strong we are uh, because it's pretty painful. It's time consuming. But the same way or same process, if you're given process, uh, if you're processing a new company, if you're <clears throat> if you're going to school for education, whatever it is, you're going through a process, hmm. and it can be painful. If you got a new something that you just came up with, and you said, "Hey, this is the best idea," and every time you you come up with it, and someone say, "Well, it's not going to work," and you say, "Wow, yes, it is." It's the same. It's symbolic. It's the same thing. You giving birth to that thing, and we have that power to do it. Uh, this is so good y'all if you're watching the video if you're not watching the video you know I'm just like moving all around and I'm trying to be quiet so that y'all can hear because I this really resonates with me in so many forms and fashions and levels and I feel like a lot of times we talk about a natural birth but we don't talk about that that spiritual symbolic birth of things and that is just a powerful statement. And I don't know how it resonates with you guys, but it really resonates with me just for the simple fact that I just had a baby, but I really, besides the baby, right? I feel like a whole different person. I don't know who this person is. I'm trying to gain relationship with this person. I'm trying to grow and develop and be me and trying to find out all the different pieces. And then also too, like understanding my insecurities and understand why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. And it it, call, it, recall, it makes you call back to your past and really think about what you're thinking about. Why are you feeling the way you're feeling and bring out the things that you always try to suppress. So Roberta, for you, when did you realize that you were walking into your womanhood. This was not one of my questions, but you you made me bring this up. You made me bring this up. <laughs> well, so when did you when did uh, that happen? Because you know, we have so many, uh, and this is kind of the second part of it, but we have so many things in our environment, in our culture that tells us other. And mm. it uh, makes us objects, it makes mm-hmm. women into objects. But the thing is, is that we're powerful. Uh, We're so powerful that each of us have to be birthed through a woman. So that's how powerful we are. Uh, But we let things uh, 
to make us into objects, meaning, yeah. you know, you have to look a certain way, you have to do this a certain way. Yep. Those things are true because you know what? We creators, we're the creators. So hold up, how are you gonna make a creator into an object? Hmm. So I think it's just the growth of realizing that, wait a minute, hold on. I'm putting a lot of work into this. Hmm. My mom put a lot of work into this. My grandmama <laughs> put a lot of work into this. You know, all of the women I knew put a lot of work into it, whether they had children, didn't have children. You see, so because we are community based people anyway. Yes. So we're always looking and watching one another. So Hmm. I just realized that, you know what, I have more power than what I even benefit myself. I'm not an object if I'm a creator. You know, you can't create, the object can't create itself. No. And neither can it create something else, but I'm the creator. So I must resign with that. I must know that's pretty powerful. And then too much is given, it's always going to be required. So watching over what I've provided is very important as as a woman. You know, just being able and even, uh, you know, as a mentor, uh, working with other people, you know, uh, I I practice that. I have Mm. to give you something before I walk away from you. And it may not be anything big, but that's part of my womanhood. That's deep. That's deep. That I have to sit there and let that resonate with me. Um, because we just don't talk enough about womanhood and we don't talk about the struggles of womanhood and how do you get to the place that you need to get. So what can women do um, to take care of themselves so that they can really be the best versions of themselves? Yeah. Well, I think the, it to begin with is to, first of all, uh, you said something very important. You said, pay attention to what your thoughts are. Mm. Sometimes we don't even stop to think about what our thoughts are. We just act out of our thoughts. So knowing our thoughts, knowing when they're beneficial or not beneficial, right? And and then ownership of our power to speak to those thoughts because we could do some self-talk. We could do yes. some positive self-talk to counteract that negative self-talk, right? Yes. Uh, that you, you know... Well, you know, your your auntie may say you'll never be anything. Mm. You say, you know what, I am who I am, and I'm gonna mm. be just what I was created to be because I'm 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 a woman, and he created me with a lot of different amenities that my counteract uh, counterpart don't have. You know, yeah. even if a baby cry at night, yes, who's gonna hear the baby? It's proven in science. I'm going to yes. hear the baby. He's not yes. even going to hear the baby. So just different things like that, knowing that, knowing like, wow, I've gotten a lot of things poured into me that I don't, I'm not even aware of. Mm-hmm. And uh, being able to, to speak to some of those thoughts. So first of all, it's just, just first of all, is to have our, acknowledge what our mind is and where mm-hmm. our mind is taking us to. You know, if it's making us feel uh, negative, because uh, I always say if there's some negative emotions out of it, yeah. then most of all, you want to go ahead and counteract those things. You want to start being aware of that. So knowing where you are mentally, mm-hmm. uh, taking care of that, that's that's the most important part. Yeah. I am speechless right now because a lot of times when we talk about womanhood, we talk about the physical and what you really have brought up for me is the things that you think determine or create your womanhood. They really can take control of you. And I think for me in my life, the most vulnerable time was after I had my baby and my mind was going everywhere and I couldn't even y'all I'm really honest about this I, I couldn't even remember my baby's name I'm like I should not know what this kid's name is she is outside my body why is she here I'm not ready for her to be here I want her to stay in my tummy 
Um, and for those know, like I love my pregnancy and I had tons of little, I had tons of challenges, but I had my doula to really work through with me about, with a lot of stuff, but I wanted her just to stay with me. And I'm like, my mom was like, girl, she cannot stay with you. You got to let her go. (laughs) And my mom and everybody was so excited about her coming, but I wasn't ready for that. But I realized that my mind was so discombobulated. Bobble. Like I could not even like actually think or remember words or any of that stuff because it was such a strong and powerful transition. And when we go through things, whether it be birth or trauma or a change in relationships or even just a change in our body, like sometimes people will come and talk about when they've been sick in the past and how that really took a mental toll on them because their body was beating them down. And they were like, how do I, um, how do I connect? How do I um, um, really take control of this thing? And your mind is literally the first place you have to start. Um, right. Do you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, uh, it's overwhelming because another uh, part of that, uh, and, and that's part of the womanhood um, component, uh, that we don't get a lot of advocacy for post- postpartum either. Yes. And postpartum can go on for two, maybe a little bit more, yes, depending on how you've changed the uh compounds of the uh, chemistry of the brain yes because being depressed or changing it any other type of way it starts to it starts to operate that way so you you may again you have to be aware of those things because anything that makes you feel different or makes you feel uncomfortable I say any of the negatives then it's something to say hey you know what it doesn't really belong to me and I need to see what's going on with this And I also can operate off of, hey, I can do some self-talk. You know, this is not necessarily, it's not real. You know, I'm just getting a little anxiety. I'm going to live through this. I'm going to be okay. But it takes some, it takes some grooming and some learning for that. And a lot of people don't have the advocacy to to even mm-hmm. know that, like I mm-hmm. said, usually we just think these thoughts and then we think, you know, oh, wow, if I even say it to someone, they're going to think something is wrong with me. But the truth is so many women go through the same process because, again, that's a transition. And it is a, a it's very a traumatic. It's traumatic for the mom. It's traumatic for mm-hmm. even the baby. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's, it's just a traumatic uh process and again going to the symbolic part of it that I was saying with everything else in life that we have to go through we have to work for even if it's just hey I want to have a house built and I want to you know this house to be this and this and this that's a process right you may get a lender you may not get a lender and you're like okay I'm gonna get this lender and you continue feeling a certain way about it in your gut you're like oh I know I'm gonna get it but then you get upset when you say, okay, I was declined. What are we going to do? Mm-hmm. We got to come up with this. So it's up and down with these emotions. So it's it's about, it's almost about the same thing. It's processes of feeling different ways. But being aware of it is number one. You yeah. always want to be aware. And you always want to be uh, cognitive of what, what it had makes you feel, how things make you feel, mm-hmm. where you're at. Where were you at with your with your thoughts? Wow. wow. That was such a great uh tip that you gave our listeners today, as well as me, when it comes to womanhood and understanding it. If people want to connect with you, where can they go to connect with you? If they're like, I just want to learn more about your work or um, I don't know if you're taking on clients right now, but um, uh, where can they connect with you? Uh, well, I do have an ad. Uh, well, it's, it's my first and last name with Alma. So I do have one there. Uh, you can always connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and then I am also on uh, Instagram. And uh, it's it's my name. And it just says, um, well, mindfulness is basically uh, my favorite practice at this time. I do do mm-hmm. some cognitive therapy. 
uh, but I, I really practice mindfulness with the uh, pandemic, uh, pandemic going through the pandemic. Uh, there's just a lot of stress, a lot of just uh, not knowing what tomorrow is going to look like and what yeah. yesterday looked like certain didn't, certainly didn't feel good. So uh, yeah. we're just all going through, muddling through this pandemic. So uh, I practice more mindfulness. And mindfulness is just right now appreciation of today. Mm. this moment uh, and and practicing it so wow. that's that's mainly what what I practice and uh that's what I really uh encourage uh, my clients to practice uh because there's nothing we can do about yesterday and tomorrow we don't know we've learned that right yeah uh, but we certainly can enjoy one another today and love on each other and love ourselves today mm. This has been a good word, y'all. Um, I just feel like so many people are in this world trying to search for things and trying to figure out where do we go. And it's having these small conversations that impact how we see the world and what we do and where do we go. I don't want you guys to worry at all. Um, her information will be down below, below this podcast. You can reach out to Roberta and connect with her and talk with her. Um, hopefully this is not the last time that we connect and we are together because I would love to be able to do more work with you. And this is so last minute. I don't know if you want to, but can you lead us out in a small mindfulness practice so people can understand it? Because a lot of times when people hear mindfulness, they're thinking that you have to be in this meditative state and they don't really know what it looks like. So okay. can you take us through like a little short one if you want? Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, I sure I can. Um, this is just simply breathing. Uh, it's one of the favorites that most of the people that come to group with me love. Uh, and it works uh, for uh, just about everybody. Mm -hmm. um, basically, uh, I'll just ask you guys to get relaxed, get in a relaxed position. Uh, you're going to, at the count of three, you're going to just take a breath, a breath into your nose. And then at the count of three, you're going to let it go out your mouth. Simple as that. Now, during this time, because we're just going to do a couple of minutes. During this time, I'm going to remind you, I only want you to breathe. Mm -hmm. That means I don't want you to think about what you're going to put on for dinner. You're not going to worry about who you got to meet later on or what's going to happen at work or what you know, baby said or what honey said, you're going to only breathe and so you're going to only concentrate right now. Now, this this one is just to help you reset, just like a computer. Sometimes it needs to be reset because we have we have a brain. Our brain is set up like a computer, actually. And so the thoughts just keep going and sometimes they can overload us and cause anxiety. So that's all this one is. And so we'll go ahead and start and then I'll come back and we'll just talk about just a little bit of it. So at the count of three, and to relax, I want you to breathe into your nose. One, two, three. One, two, three, out through your mouth. One, two, three, back into your nose. One, two, three, back out through your mouth. One, two, three, back into your nose. One, two, three, back out through your mouth. This time, we're going to take a very deep breath, and we're only going to breathe. Only remember to breathe. So one, two, three, very deep one through your nose. Hold it just a minute. One, two, three, out through your mouth. Very slow. Take a couple more short breaths. One, two, three. Into your nose. One, two, three. Out through your mouth. Only breathing. One, two, three. Into your nose. One, two, three. Out through your mouth. So that's just a little skip it up. Thank you so much for doing that. I hope everybody is grounded 
I hope everybody takes that time to check in with themselves. And until next time, you guys, we're going to be exploring more amazing women and understanding what this womanhood means to them. Thank you so much, Brenda, for being here. Thank you for connecting with me. I just want to say, she reached out. She's like, I want to be a part of it. So <laughs> I just want to thank you for being brave and giving me a chance and meeting with our group here. Until next time, you guys, see you soon. All right, well, peace. <laughs> thank you.